Awesome. So it's one o'clock. That must be time for America's favorite game show, <laughs> NIA Daily Dose. Um, we've got a great speaker today. I'm looking forward to hearing Dr. Lisa. But before we go there, I want to take just a minute or two. I have a, uh, I have a new goal. This corona thing is bringing out uh, the, something in every one of us. But I have a new goal. I want to take five minutes. And I've got 31 people on here. And I'm going to let you challenge me. But I want to make sure that every single person on this phone call has either already applied, if you had a business that had income at the end of 2019, I wanna make sure that 100% of the 31 people on here have either applied for uh, the grant, which is the immediate $10,000 on the economic disaster loan on the sba.gov website, or are in the process of applying for the PPP at their local bank. Can anybody on this phone, on this call, who has been here, had a business at the end of 2019, tell me any reason they should not apply. Take me on. Anybody, find anyone in that arena that says that they should not apply for one of these loans. So there's a new message, let's see here. Self-employed don't have a mortgage. That does not disqualify you if you took money either as an independent contractor or an employee out of a company at the end of 2019, you can have recourse. So mortgage doesn't have anything to do with uh, your ability to get that. Haven't done your 2019 taxes does not prevent you from applying, Craig. In fact, I just filled out the PPP myself, which is the brand new application. I wanna to touch on that real quick. Uh, we're gonna send a link out later today to all the large banks but if you have a smaller bank and you go on their website and you're ready to download the form and fill it out, I want you to check something first. Uh, look in the bottom left-hand corner and make sure the date of that application is 420 because I have found three banks this morning that have the older application up, uh, which says 320. So make sure in the bottom left-hand corner of the application that your bank gives you, uh, I, like I said, I had three different banks this morning had the wrong application. Up. That's how fluid this is. So make sure you're filling out the correct application, which is 420. And I, we will be sending a link out this afternoon to the larger banks. Any other reasons? Okay, great. So we're going to send a short video out later about that. And we're also going to send a little short video tomorrow morning a lot of information flying at you but i want to make sure that you get it firsthand from us as up to date as it possibly can so, so we're going to segue into our speaker today we're very very blessed uh dr lisa brooks grio she thought i didn't know how to say that i'm i've spent a lot of time in louisiana <laughs> okay. spelled g-r-e-a-u-x like a good like a good roux in a gumbo right absolutely so dr brooks is a principal and founder of uh seek your natural calling uh, 25 years of strategy, consulting, and business development, sales leadership, executive development experience. She's worked with some big companies, Morgan Chase and Verizon and Pfizer and Conoco Minolta, and we're blessed to have her today. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Lisa. Thanks for being here. Lisa, how would you like to handle the questions? you want Daniela to read them out as they come? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, to read them out as they come. That's perfect, because I really want the session to be inter like highly interactive, so, you know, not a lot of formality to it, but that would be great. You got it, Lisa. Okay, awesome. All right, so Scott, thank you so much. And also Stacy Apple out of the Atlanta chapter, thanks so much for, for you know, having me and welcoming me to, to talk about a topic that I am so passionate about. So totally appreciate that. And I will tell you, I have been listening to the Daily Dose this week, and I have taken the advice and the tips from Tish Tyne and from, um, from Tony, Tony Aris Taylor, because they have been fantastic. So this has been a great forum. So I totally appreciate it and, um, and in awe of uh, what Network in Action does. Um, but I wanna talk a little bit about today, some of the tips about helping, you know, leading in times of crisis and not for nothing, but this is probably the biggest crisis that we've seen in a long time, you know, if ever. So, you know, what are some of the things, the tips what are some of the things that we can do to help, you know, as franchisees members, what can we do to help our, our other members as well as help them help their clients? So 
without further ado, I want to kind of get on with it. Um, that was a, a quick plug for a book that I wrote um, most recently, but I'll talk about that at the end. But the most important thing that I want to talk to folks about is, you know, if you're leading, and it doesn't matter what you're leading, you could, you, you could say, well, I, I'm not leading an organization. But if you're leading in your church, if you're leading in your community, if you're part of a nonprofit group, you're doing something, you are leading in some way or some fashion. As franchisees owners, you are definitely leading, you know, and your members are also leading. So it's a couple of things to really keep in mind, especially now, is that these are defining moments. And what I mean by that is people are gonna remember what you do. The things that you do now, the things that you say, long after this pandemic is over, people are going to remember the things that you did during these times of crisis. So whether it was like, you know, a spoken word or whether it was a great gesture, something that you did, people are watching. And the other thing about that, it's not always just what you say or do. It's often what you don't say and what you don't do. And not to scare anyone, but be cognizant oftentimes of, of the body language that you're displaying. And especially if we're doing Zoom, you know, Zoom calls with folks, what's your body language saying? You know, what are your facial expressions? So all, all of that comes into play. And as leaders, first and foremost, people are watching you anyway but even more so during these really trying times. They're watching because people want to get clues into, okay, like, is everything okay? What does our leader say? Um, and, and then, you know, I also love that great leaders exhibit genius, power, and the magic of boldness during defining times. And essentially what that means is, is that, you know, folks who step up to the plate they'll step up and they'll do things that people might question in other times. So there's that sense of boldness that perhaps in, during times of, of peace and times of calmness that we might not do. But it's getting outside of our comfort zones. And not for nothing, but none of us really loves to jump outside of our comfort zone. You know, we do it when we have to. And this is one of those times where we have to. So just remember, people are always watching. And in terms of what people need right now, people need communication. And oftentimes people will say, well, hey, you know, I sent an email or I told them that. Yes, you might have done that. But we get so bombarded with emails, with texts, with even phone calls. So. We have so many screens open, whether it's our laptop screen, whether it's our phone, whether it's our tablet, you name it, we have so many screens. So yes, you may have sent the email once, you may have sent the email twice, but people need communication. We need that repetition. And more is better. And you know, to the point where you think that you're over communicating, you can't over communicate enough in times like this. And I'll just take a step back too good effective communication because we're being bombarded with so many things about COVID-19, but be effective in your communication. And the ways that you communicate, whether, I mean, it, again, the modalities are important too. So all ways to hit all people because some people prefer text, some people prefer email, some people prefer, you know, hearing from you voice, some people prefer hearing live or on Zoom but just make sure you're keeping people in the loop because in the absence of really good communication, people tend to create their own narrative. And when we create our own narratives without solid, actual and accurate facts, um, it's usually a negative narrative. So that's why it's really important to keep people in the loop, to keep the channels of communication open. Uh, and, you know, I always say, tell the truth, you know, to the extent that you can, meaning that share the information that you can. Obviously, there may be some information, you know, with either your fran you know, franchisees or with your members or with their clients that perhaps <clears throat> you can't share. But to the extent that you can, share all the information. And what's most important is that calm presence whether it's in person, whether it's virtual, but keeping that calm demeanor and that calm presence, because we all know that if somebody's really hyper and excited, you know, we tend to get hyper excited. We tend to mirror you know, that person. 
So that calm presence will go a long, long way in helping keep, keeping people on an equal in, and um, level keel. This is really about knowing who you are as a leader. And it's, I, I titled this Leader Know Thyself. And the better you know yourself as a leader, as a person, as a franchisee owner, um, the better you're going to be able to, you know, guide your organization, guide your members, you know, guide your own clients. Um, and the better prepared you are, the, the better outcome you're going to get. And leaders who understand themselves have, they have a high degree of self-awareness and they're self-confident. So and what I mean by self-awareness is that they know how their words and how their actions, how they, how they land on other people. So they know that, you know what, I should probably think about what I'm going to say before I say it, because it could be perceived this way, or it could be perceived that way. So they take the time to think about the messages that they're sending. And I th we all probably have that friend that doesn't have a filter, you know, and it's that friend who just, whatever pops into their head comes out of their mouth. So it goes without taking the time to process it and say, yeah, that's probably not a good idea, or that's probably not a good conversation or that's not a good comment to make. So have that little bit of self-awareness, you know? Um, and then by having the self-awareness, self-confidence and resilience, you're able to lead others through unprecedented events and experiences like we're having right now. So take a little bit of time, and this is a great time to do it. I mean, while we have this unplanned, precedent of a time to happen to start to stop and think about who you are as a leader and because again once we get through all this we're going to be back running at warp speed if if we already aren't right now and here's the thing you know so do i think that there's a silver lining in all this yeah i do and i'll, I'll talk about that in a minute but leadership you know in a crisis is our best best teacher and there is nothing like a crisis, like uncertainty, to, it, to test a leader's capabilities. <clears throat> and when times are going well, you know, when times are smooth and we don't see those bumps in the road, you know, it's just, okay, you've got the skill sets, you're doing well, you're taking the business perhaps to another level. But when you have things that are unprecedented, whether you have things that perhaps have never happened before, that teaches you unlike anything else. And if we chronicle our own lives and we think about those really kind of tough experiences that we've had, whether they've been growing up, whether they were in our, you know, our work life, if we are just even our personal lives, those really tough experiences have taught us more about who we are and our resilience than anything else. And, you know, and of course, you know, failure teaches us those incredibly valuable lessons. Not that success doesn't. But success teaches us that, you know, we kind of have the right stuff to move an organizational forward. You know, the crisis, the, um, you know, the unprecedented events teaches us that, you know, we can get back up and, you know, we can pivot and we can turn in many different directions. So I'm going to take a little bit of a pause to see if there are any questions, anything I need to elaborate on, or if anyone wants to share their own experience about what they've been going through now, um, you know, as a leader, you know, leading your franchise, leading your, perhaps even your, your client base, your customers, what that's been like, and, or wants to share any experience. So let me just pause. I could tell you um, from Network in Action standpoint, working in HQ, um, you know, just as we realized how the tides were going to shift, um, we, you know, Scott said, jump on that surfboard, come to me with ideas, you know, and um, nothing was off the table. And I thought that, um, you know, obviously, you know, we, we came up with a daily dose shortly thereafter. We rolled out the plan within a week. And um, I thought that was a, a great example of leadership, being able to adapt in a time where, um, you know, things were very uncertain and we didn't know how it was all going to play out. So that's yeah, one example. And, that's a, and if y'all want to light up the chat, 
um, you know, the, it's not much is going on right there, but I think it's a, a great subject and we could talk about our experiences. You know, and Dan, thanks for that, because what's what's happening and what we're seeing, and I'm sure you all are seeing it too, is that, you know, during this pandemic, people are being so incredibly innovative and things that I had never even seen before or thought of. I'm seeing people take the bull by the horns and the, they're like, okay, you know what, we're either going to, we're going to try this or we're going to pivot here. We're going to do something different. And they're coming up with all these great ideas. And the daily dose is, is one example of like, wow, this is an incredible idea. This is so helpful. So yeah, absolutely. I also, they also think, they say that you know, necessity is the mother of invention. I also think that crisis you know, is the mother of invention as well. So I, have, so I have a question for you. What would you do if you knew that you could not fail? So if you knew it were impossible to fail, what would you do? This is the interactive part. Guys, hit that chat. Ooh, that's a good one. What would I do if I couldn't? I would become a pilot. You'd become a pilot, okay. In my old age, if I knew I wasn't gonna fall out of the sky. <laughs> okay, great. Anybody else? What else? What would you do if you knew that you knew that you knew you could not fail? What would you do? And, and you know, the lottery doesn't count. I know that uh, in your previous slide, I didn't get to comment on it. It says uh, through failures, we achieve our greatest. Um, it is through failures. So what I was saying is when we fail at stuff, it's kind of good to kind of to fail because then you can succeed because you fail. Otherwise, you don't know. Like, unless you fail at something, you don't know how good you could be at it. So now taking this question further, what would I do if I could not fail? I guess I would try anything. That's, of course, within legal realms. Because if I know I can't fail at it, I mean, I'd run for president, anything. Because I can't fail. So I wouldn't have that fear of failure. Because from failure comes success if you know how to apply it. Does that make okay. sense? Oh, it does, Yolanda. Thanks for that. That's really good. It's insightful. Now we got a bunch more from the chat. We got from uh, Carol McRoberts. I would become a sports announcer. Okay. From <laughs> Ashley Grigas, I would run a multi-million dollar online business. Ooh, okay, yeah. love that. Ms. Julia Chambers, I would build a foundation to support families of glyboplastoma and other okay. orphan diseases. Awesome. We have a ninja warrior, a lawyer, <laughs> a skydiver. <laughs> yeah. Great. And well, Austin would be a rock star, and I'd be his uh, manager. Ah, you are awesome. a rock star, you Oscar. Are. Love that. Good. I, and I love this. And the reason I ask this question is because if we think about it now, and, and again, we're all, all, all of us on this call are leaders in some form or fashion. But I also want us to start thinking, because like, this is that time where everything that we've been doing, we probably, you know, we're questioning now, like, oh my gosh, I never saw this coming. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Because everything is so uncertain. So I, I always pose this question and I pose it now and, you know, in this whole arena is like, what would we do if we knew we couldn't fail? Because the world has changed as we know it so differently. So I want us to start thinking about, if we knew we couldn't fail. Like, what are we going to be doing in this time to maybe start to push that envelope a little bit? So more on that later, but I want you to ponder that question. If I couldn't fail, what would I do? And, and what's stopping me? You know, what's stopping me from pursuing that? Uh, I, was, I was on the Daily Dose, I think it was yesterday, and I remember, uh, I remember the, the young lady was talking about, you know, what fear is. And I thought, well, geez, you know, some of the things that I would do if I couldn't fail, but it's the fear that's keeping me from it. And then I started examining it, you know, based on her comments. Well, is that fear really real? So again, I'm a work in progress on this. And um, if I knew that I couldn't fail, I would be a hip hop dancer. So those are my aspirations. So, you know, I'm going to be working on my hip hop moves over the, you know, the, you know, the, the next few weeks or so, and I'll report back on it. and then see how I go. So, but um, I want to pivot us now into here are some, you know, some crystallized steps for leadership in crisis. And you guys, you guys probably know all of this. However, what I've done is packaged it in a way that's like, okay, do this, do this, do this, do this, and do this. So 
I'm going to take a look at the, you know, so there's six steps. And the first step is anticipate, right? So anticipate. Now, none of us could have anticipated this. I remember January 1st, I'm setting my goals. I do my goals for the year. So I'm writing down my goals. I want to do these, you know, these different things, these five things, setting my goals. Yeah, the pandemic was never part of that. So looking at all the goals that I set, I'm like, okay, I need to go back and I need to change some of these goals because I, I did not anticipate this. But now that it's here, so step one is anticipate what's going to happen next. You know, predicting what lies ahead. So we're here now today and it's, we're April 3rd. What is ha what's going to be happening like a month out? So May 4th, what do we think is going to happen? What's our best hypothesis, our best guess as to what can happen? And these are the kinds of things that you can be doing with your members. You know, as franchise um, owners, here's some of the things you can do with your members. And they, in turn, can take that and do that with their clients and with their customers and say, okay, here's where we are. None of us anticipated this. Now, based on where we are, what is our best hypothesis, our best guess about what's going to happen next? So predict what lies ahead. And as a kid, I always thought my mom had superpowers because I thought she could see around corners, right? And for those, you know, those, of you, those of you that are parents, you know that, okay, if your kid is in the other room and they're really quiet, you know that, that something's going on or they're into something that they shouldn't be doing. And so you call their name and you ask them what they're doing and they're like, how did my mom see that? You know, it's because the ability to see around those corners. And that's what I'm talking about here. So seeing around the corners, thinking, okay, here, if all these, these, all these elements come together, perhaps something isn't right. Just when your, your kid is too quiet in the other room for an extended period of time. But it's seeing around those corners and saying, based on where we are today, based on what we have, what's, what could happen next? And then anticipate those aftershocks. And for anyone who's ever lived on the, the West Coast, especially in, you know, in LA, you know that once there's that big earthquake, there are those aftershocks that come afterwards, right? So it's like, yeah, you had the big earthquake and then you brace yourself because they're the aftershocks. So anticipate what might some of those aftershocks be. And the aftershocks can also, they don't have to always be negative. They can also be positive too. So what could be some of the positive things that come out of all of this? Step two, navigate. So when we're navigating, it's like course correcting in real time. Again, because we are you know, charting these unprecedented waters, we are navigating in waters that we've never been in before. And oftentimes we have a set strategy and we've spent so much time, energy, and effort getting our strategy together. And we're like, okay, we're gonna march down this way. This is our strategy, these are the things we put in place. All I'm saying to you is that's great. However, you may have to pivot and say, okay, this is not working for us now, that's not working for us now. Doesn't matter how much time, energy, and effort we put into this strategy, we gotta pivot, we gotta change. And it's not, okay, we can't wait for six months or three months to see if it's going to work out, we got to move now. So don't be, a don't be afraid to pivot and, and, and to move quickly. We talked about this, but I can't stress this enough, is communicate, you know, continually, every day, in every way, all the time, because we're so hungry and people are so hungry for information that they want to hear. And oftentimes they want to hear they want to hear from their their leader, you know whether it's you as a franchisee owner, whether it's um, your members, whether it's your members and they're speaking to their clients, communicate something, you know communicate. It can be as simple as hey folks, just checking in, don't have anything else to report today, just checking in to do a health check. How's everyone doing? As simple as that, but it's about hearing from you. Because again, people will remember how much you cared about them. People will remember how you made them feel throughout this whole time. Yeah. Step four is listen. And I can't stress this one enough, is listen to what you don't wanna hear. 
And oftentimes that's hard for people because they don't want to hear the negative or they're surrounded by people who are only telling them what they think, you know, that you want to hear. And that's a dangerous place to be because if people are only telling you the good news stories, then that's a tough spot because you're not allowing yourself to think about what can happen down the road. So allow yourself to hear the negative and allow yourself to reach out to people who you might not get um, advice from or who you might not normally take advice from. Reach out to those other folks who perhaps are in a department or you know, part of your network, but you don't talk to them a whole lot because they'll have a different perspective on the world. So allow your health self to hear the negative and to hear from different people because that's gonna help you to not run into a blind spot, not have a blind spot. So moving on to step five is to learn. And if we do nothing else from this experience, we need to just learn. Learn from everything, learn from all the things that have happened, how you felt. And you know, I'm not a big journaler. I, I will go on record and admit I am not a big journaler. I, I have friends who do this every day. They've been doing it for decades and I so admire them. Um, however, I have started to journal during these last three weeks <clears throat> and I wanted to capture the experiences that I was feeling. I wanted to capture some of the things I was thinking and what, I, what I've learned. So what it's helped me to do is to capture what I've learned. What were the things that, you know what, this worked really well. And you know what, and then this, yeah, not so much. This didn't work well. And a lot of you may already do this and, you know, with any kind of events, but um, it's, I also I borrowed this kind of from, you know, from the military, they call it an after action review. So it essentially, you know, the way I do it, I do it a very um, minimal form is a, you know, take a sheet of paper and one column is a plus column. Another column is a minus column. The plus column, I outline what are all the things that went well and what are all the things that, yeah, you know what, didn't go as anticipated. And so the plus column is it helps me replicate that success again and time again. Because when we think about success, people think, oh, that's just a fluke. No, uh, no, not so much. Success is doing things right over and over again and learning from them. Now, in the minus column, I'm going to look at what went wrong, what happened, and examine it. Yeah, so I don't, ha you know, so again, that I can mitigate, you know, the negative side. Uh, so again, learn from this experience. I, I would hate for us to go through and say, phew, we got through that, you know, and on to the next for something else to happen again, where we could really learn from this. So if there's anything I want you to do or call to action, I want you to just kind of jot down every day, hey, this worked well. Eh, and this not so much. So you can look back on it and say, okay, replicate this again. Maybe this with a few tweaks might work, okay? And this next, this next statement is, know what you would do when you don't know what to do. And it's one of those things because this is what we're faced with right now. This is where we are. Doing, doing something, you know, knowing what to do when you don't know what to do, because we have never been in this situation that is impacting so many people from so many places. So knowing what to do when you don't know what to do, what that means is applying those lessons, you know, to these new and unfamiliar situations. So what are some of the past lessons? What are some of the past experiences that we've been in and take some of those lessons and apply it to where we are today? Because everybody's looking for you for answers. You're like, okay, what are we supposed to do? And you may be thinking to yourself, well, I don't know, but you do know, is take some of those lessons from you know, previous experiences, chronicle our life and say, okay, this happened, this happened, this happened. Take those experiences and apply them to today. Right? So you do know what to do when you quote unquote, don't know what to do. And then lead. So pulling all the five steps together to take the leadership role because folks, you're in the spotlight. You are in the spotlight now, whether you signed up for it or not, you are in the spotlight. People are looking to you. And this is where you're improving yourself 
to really elevate others. And I always say, you're in the spotlight, so follow your true north. You know, follow your north star. What is it that is sacrosanct for you that, you know what, even in times of crisis, this is my line in the sand. I'm not crossing that line. You know, this is what makes me a moral person. This, would, this is what makes me who I am. This is what makes me, you know, have integrity. This is uh, my true north. This is my line in the sand. I'm not crossing it. Yeah, so remember that because it's easy to get caught up in, oh, well, you know, it's unprecedented, you know, it, it won't matter. Yeah, it, it kind of does matter because it'll matter to you in another six months. So follow your true north. Again, people are watching. People are watching you. And they'll be able to report back, well, I remember six months ago when so-and-so said this or they did that. And you'll, you know, you'll look back and you'll say, you remember that? But that's because people are watching. Um, you know, in a crisis, as leaders, and all of us on this phone are leaders, we must connect you know, motivate and inspire others. And, you know, this is showing genuine concern and genuine compassion because these, we do have folks, you know, who are uh, our franchisees owners, who are our members. So having concern for them and what they're going through, you know, in their day-to-day -day life and, you know, and in their business world. And the other thing about leaders is that leaders put the safety and well-being of others before themselves. So it's, it's akin to servant leadership, which I'm such a fan of, but it's akin to servant leadership about, you know what, this is all about, we serve each other and we're in a business, we're in a service business, we're in a business to serve each other. So it's really about putting others before ourselves. And this is a, a phrase that I always, you know, subscribe to is that you can't help someone else without having that impact and help yourself. So, you know, I think it's something for all of us to, to think about. Um, and I also have this next slide is that I love this, you know, because I'm going to quote Plato, like I met him, right? But it says the measure of a man or a woman, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to assume Plato was evolved back then because he would have put a man slash woman is what he slash she does with power. And I take that to heart because these are the times, and again, unprecedented times, but it's how we act, it's what we do, it's how we treat other people during these times. And if we can just slow down a bit and reach out to you know, our, you know, our members, reach out to other franchisee owners and say, hey, how you doing? You know, what's good? And I know you all are already doing this, so I'm preaching to the converted, but it's just something for us to remember is to take that, that bit of time and reach out to other people. Because again, long after this pandemic is over, people are gonna remember how you made them feel. And now ultimately, when we strip all these things, you know, about leadership down to its basic essence, that's really what it's about. Yeah, so Plato might have been onto something way back when. Who knows? Um, and then I, I, you know, one of the things I love to think about too, especially during this time, is Maslow. And you know, if we think back to, I guess, either high school or you know, even college, um, psychology 101, you had Maslow's hierarchy, right? So Maslow's hierarchy of needs and the bottom. You know, the bottom number one basic need for us is, is safety. And that's where people are right now. So in a time of crisis and uncertainty, we have to meet people where they are. And a good majority of people are like, okay, I'm, I, you know, I can't hear about your strategy or, or what you want to do next. I need to make sure that my family's safe, that we've got food, clothing, and shelter. You know, those are my most basic needs you know, for a lot of folks right now. So, you know, will my business survive? Well, so those were at, you know, we're at ground zero. So the most basic needs need to be met first and then we can move on. But that's where we have to meet people. We have to meet them really where they are. So how about if I pause here and see if I've got any questions, any comments, any concerns, any anything. 
I think you're good to go. Okay. So I don't have too much more to, to share with you, but this was um, a greeting that I fell in love with. Uh, and it's from a tribe in South Africa. And they greet each other by saying, Sawabana. And what this means is, I see you, I respect you, I value you for who you are. And I, I love that phrase because it talks about not just I see you, your physical presence, but it's I see what you're bringing to the table. I see who you are. Um, I, obviously, I respect you, but I also value you. And I love this because it just, you know, it speaks to everything. And so I will say to all of the NIA franchisees and members and guests who are on the call, Celebana. And I am going to ask you, first I'm going to thank you in multiple languages. And then I'll ask you for any closing questions, comments, or thoughts. Let's see here. I'm not seeing any pop up. What's the sign of a good educator when you don't have any questions? <laughs> that or it's Friday afternoon and um, it's a uh, happy, good. early happy hour. You're good. You mentioned earlier before you started that you were going to talk about a book that you put out. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Oh, so yeah, so the, the, there's a book, uh, a book that I wrote last year. It's called um, Don't Abdicate the Throne. And what it essentially is, it's a book, it's about how, especially for women, to take back their power or not give it up in the first place. And uh, a number of the chapters, it's really a roadmap and a guide for women, uh, whether they're women who are fresh out of college women in mid-career or women looking to pivot from into their act too. But what are some of the things that they need to know? And the reason I wrote the book in the first place is because like many of you, I was so tired of you know grabbing books. I'm a voracious reader. I read everything I can get my hands on. But I was so tired of all these books that told me what to do. Here's what I needed to do. But, and I got excited because I knew what to do. But then when I started to do it, it's like, okay, I'm stuck because I don't know the how to. So I, yeah, I wrote this book because I thought we needed a guide and a how to. So a step by step, this is how you do it. So that's, that's the reason why um, I, I wrote the book. And that's what it's about. So thanks for asking. Any other questions or comments? We have a lot of thank yous on the chat there. Hmm? What was that, Yolanda? I was asking where is her, uh, her book sold? It's on Amazon. Like, Never heard of that. What is Amazon? <laughs> it's some little, I don't know, bookseller that's online. It used to be a little small bookstore, didn't it? Yeah, talk about sure talk about evolving. Right. Hey, listen, thank you. We got great comments here. Thanks for sharing this information. You know, Lisa, just to follow up before we get off the phone, uh, I read uh, and I can't remember her name, but she's considered to have the smartest woman in the world um, from America, and she has the highest IQ. And she says, "I can ask you two questions and tell you where you're headed. They are, who are you hanging out with, and what books are you reading?" Yeah. So how about that? I love that. Let and me get on. Uh, yeah, let me get on everyone's calendar. If you can grab your phones, um, if you can grab your phones, uh, your phone calendar, I want to put a couple things on there. Next week, uh, we have two great speakers lined up on Tuesday and Thursday. So on Tuesday, we're going to help launch your business uh, with a force you haven't seen before with Kathy Bauer Socks. And on Thursday, we have an expert in a topic that I need more help in than anything, and that's Instagram. Well, my wife, my wife might say I need more help in our relationship than anything, but I need a lot of help in Instagram. So we've got a great expert on Instagram on Thursday. So put those down one o'clock for your daily dose next week. And then I hope 
everyone will join us. I want to I want to go out and try to set a Guinness Book of World Records. We're going to have a mixer next Friday at four o'clock right here at Zoom with NIA, and we've put up some money for three different little contests. Best backdrop, most creative backdrop, best short story under three minutes, and best joke. So get a glass of wine, put it on your calendar. We all need a little laughter and a little levity. So I hope you'll join us next week. Thank you so much, Dr. Lisa. Appreciate your time. Thanks to everyone for being on here. Please stay safe this weekend. Be healthy. Love on your families and have a great weekend. Thank you all very much. Thanks, everybody.